A very warm welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer from the parish of Wareham in Dorset. We pray for all of you who watch our services, wherever in the world and whenever in the week you watch them, that you will be drawn closer to the love of our Lord Jesus Christ as you join with us in worship. If you haven't met me, my name is Helen Williams and I'm the Assistant Curate here in Wareham. After this service goes out on a Sunday, we gather together on Zoom for a cup of coffee. If you don't already receive the invitation to that, please get in touch with our parish office using the details that we will display at the end of the service and we would love to get to know you. Today, we conclude our series of sermons celebrating Creation Tide, and our service this morning is around the theme of liberating creation. So I invite you to join in singing our opening hymn, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder.
let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil distortions and hatreds. And let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for all his children. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's join together in the words of the Collect, the special prayer for today. God, our refuge and strength, bring near the day when war shall cease and poverty and pain shall end. The earth may know the peace of heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So as God's forgiven people, let's join in singing Amazing Grace. Our readings this morning are read for us by Jeanette Guinness and David Harris, after which we will have our sermon, which today is preached by our rector, Canon Simon Everett. Our first reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 8, beginning at verse 18. The Apostle Paul writes to, of the sure and certain hope we have for ourselves and for creation through Jesus Christ's death for us on the cross. So Romans 8, verse 18. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. 
A creation waits in eager expectation for the sons of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning, as in the pains of childbirth, right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we were saved. But hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is St John chapter 12, verses 44 to 46. Then Jesus cried out, Whoever believes in me does not believe in me only, but in the one who sent me. The one who looks at me is seeing the one who sent me. I have come into the world as a light, so that no one who believes in me should stay in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. I wonder if you're a glass half full or a glass half empty kind of person. As we come to the end of our sermon series in Creation Tide, I think it couldn't really be a better time right in the middle of the COP26 summit in Glasgow. We've had a week during which there have been significant announcements, but hopefully there is much more to come. So are you optimistic or are you pessimistic? And I suppose that really or greatly depends on uh, what you are really hoping for. If you're hoping for all the world leaders and negotiators to come together and to agree to uh, zero carbon emissions within the next uh, decade or so, then you're going to be disappointed. If you'd hoped for significant breakthroughs on key areas of the environmental issues being discussed, supported by a substantial number of nations with determination to see them through, then probably you're going to be more on the optimistic side. Of course, there is always more that can be done and probably should be done. But life is incredibly complicated and so is running a country especially in a globally econ a competitive economy. In all the decisions that are made, or avoided for that matter, lives are at stake in different ways, as is the well-being of our planet. So let us pray for wisdom for our world leaders in the difficult and complex decisions that they have to make. There are too many who stand in the wings and criticise, thinking they have the answers. If only it were as easy as they suggest. Our human lives and the life of the world around us are inextricably linked. And it's good that we in the Western world have woken up to that fact. Because I think it's fair to say for that most of the last century, we had rather lost sight of uh, that as industry, medicine and technology developed a pace. We distanced nature, the land and the seas from who we are and how we lived, expecting everything just to happen. But now we know that the health and well-being of our planet is linked to our own health and well-being and especially that of the poor and the vulnerable. But no one is exempt. Even in the rich playgrounds of the West, we see forest fires raging, destroying luxury apartments and humble dwellings indiscriminately. We see homes and businesses being washed away by the floods, and we see whole swathes of countryside and towns flattened by hurricanes, typhoons and tornadoes. 
We see famines and plagues, volcanoes and earthquakes destroying life in all its form. Only the blind cannot see what is happening around them. Of course, for low-lying islands and coastal nations, the problem is far more acute. As the water levels rise and homes and villages and eventually nations disappear. Planet Earth has a problem and therefore so do we. But it may surprise you that this is nothing new. In our first reading from St Paul's epistle to the Romans he says, we know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to this present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. Paul doesn't make the direct correlation between the environment and our human well-being, but he does recognise that they both struggle. You see, we know how he, we think life ought to be. And we think we know how the created order ought to be, but it isn't. And even if all the demands of all the environmentalists and the protesters were met, it still wouldn't be as it should be. There would still be floods and fires and tempests. Poverty and disease and abuse would continue to affect the lives of many, as would wars and injustice. We live in a fallen world, which has affected how things are and how we are. Since Adam and Eve's first rebellion against God, that has been so, when they listened to the serpent rather than God. And things remain like this. It remains the case until the final consummation, when the fullness of God's glory will be revealed. This St Paul says, will be when all the problems and faults of the present world and humanity will be put right. Paul likens the present time, that is the time between Christ's first coming to earth and his return, to that of a pregnant woman approaching childbirth. At some time, known only to God the Father, there will be an end to the pain and the suffering and we and the whole world will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and the glory of the children of God, so says St Paul. The answers to the world's problems and to our own as human beings lies with God. The coming of Jesus Christ and then his Holy Spirit at Pentecost, with that we have been given a glimpse of what is to be, and that gives us hope to carry on and the desire to make the world a better place. But at the end of the day, it will be the Almighty who will bring about a new heaven and a new earth, not the environmentalists, the scientists or the world leaders. They have an important part to play, it must be said, but God is ultimately in control. When God's glory is revealed, then we shall be as we were always intended to be, and so will the world. Again, listening to St Paul, we will be brought into the freedom and the glory of the children of God. Everything, all of creation will be as God intended, and we will be with our Saviour, living in love and harmony with one another, and at one with the natural world. Glory be! So what do we do in the meantime? We strive to make the world a better place. We live sacrificial, loving lives that witness to God's love. Yes, that may inconvenience us. It may cause us hardship. But again, as St Paul says, I consider our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that, but will, that will be revealed in us. And one of the most important things that I think we can do in this present age is give hope. Because there are so many, particularly among the younger generation, 
who are despairing and are frightened by what they are seeing and hearing. They are fearful for their future. But fear without hope is very destructive and it often leads people to do desperate things. To counter this, let's listen to St Paul who says, in the hope of glory, we are saved. In the modern world, the church's message of hope is its best means of outreach. So let us use it to help those who despair of the future. And as we do this, let us wait with expectant hearts so that we are ready for that time of liberation and freedom when, we'll, when we will be at one with God, with each other and with the world around. I conclude with a prayer of St Ignatius of Loyola. Teach us, good Lord, to serve you as you deserve to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labour and not to ask for any reward except that of knowing that we do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In response to Simon's words, we're going to sing again the song that we sung last week, that sums up so much of our concern about the state of our planet, beauty for brokenness. Beauty for brokenness, hope for despair. Lord, in the suffering, this is our prayer. Bread for the children, justice, joy, peace. Sunrise to sunset, your kingdom increase. Shelter for fragile lives, cure for their ill. Craftsmen trade for their skills, land for the dispossessed, rights for the weak, voices to plead the cause of those who can't speak. God of the poor, friend of the weak, give us compassion.
Our prayers this morning are led by Anne Bashford. Let us pray. Lord God, our Creator, thank you that our hopes and dreams of clean air, unpolluted rivers and pristine seas are echoes of your purpose for our world. You love all you have made. Show us how we can share in your plan for renewed and restored creation. Save us from thinking it's too hard a task and so missing the opportunity to be part of your plans here and now. As governments come together to consider climate change at COP26, Remind the delegates of the need to act wisely and collectively with your compassion. May there be an atmosphere which promotes cooperation. And thank you for the agreements already reached. We pray for all people suffering the pain and fear of war and those places where natural disasters brought about by climate change are causing loss of livelihoods and homes. Bring peace to the earth and its peoples. Encourage and enable all who work tirelessly to repair shattered lives and to bring harmony and peace. Restore their strength when they are weary and give them always the tools they need to carry on. We bring to you also the National Health Service and ambulance crews in all the frustrations they face each day, that their energy and purpose will be renewed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Within the circle of your love, we bring those worn down by worry and all who are sick in mind or body. Be their strength in weakness and their peace in distress. We remember now those on our hearts who have asked for our prayers. We ask your comfort for everyone grieving the loss of someone they love. Be present with those 
who come to the service of light this afternoon. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we here and your people worldwide be always bringers of your peace and grace, restoring our communities. We ask these prayers in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now we join in singing our last song, which is a prayer that Jesus would come to liberate the earth.
Thank you for joining us for our service today. We pray that you will be empowered to play your part in cherishing our wonderful world in the week ahead. And we hope that we will see some of you shortly at Virtual Coffee. Details of how to contact us will be on the screen in just a minute. And please do be in touch if we can help you in any way. And now a prayer of blessing for all who have been part of this service, wherever and whenever you are watching. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of the saints, pour upon us the riches of his grace. May he give us joy in their fellowship and strengthen us to follow them in the way of holiness and come to the full radiance of his glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Pour out your spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord Jesus. Pour out your spirit on us today. Oh, so